Hey there guys, PC guy here, and I didn't really have a video ready for today, so I figured I would touch on my opinion on a topic that has been quite popular lately and probably will stay pretty popular throughout the rest of this year, and that is graphics cards, specifically the high-end, next-generation stuff that we are all expecting and waiting for. Now, I know that most people, the vast majority, are going to be getting mid or lower tier stuff because that's just how it is and because the high end is definitely pretty expensive anyway, especially if you look at the past couple of years. But among the people that usually watch channels like this, the people more on the enthusiast side of things, tend to go a bit for the higher end. So that's what I'm also be talking about, the Ampere generation from NVIDIA that's supposed to be coming out later this year as well as uh, the so-called big Navi from AMD that is also supposed to be coming out sometime this year, uh, this time actually confirmed by Lisa Su at CES. Not even going to mention Intel because there's not much of a point in that. We only have any sort of news about DG1 and at, at this point their DG1 is basically a glorified integrated graphics that's not integrated. So not really much to talk about there. And some of those leaks might be true, some might not, uh, some of them I have no trouble believing, others I find way too good to be true. Uh, this is not so much about the specifics of those leaks and the specifications that they try to detail or promise, it's more about what they expect realistically, what do I really think will happen based on both recent history and where each company stands right now. Now, I don't consider myself a fanboy of either of those companies, so I try to be as unbiased as possible while still being hopeful in what I myself perceive to be the best possible scenario. So let's start with uh, AMD. AMD, because that's the one that we have been hearing about for a lot longer and a lot more rumors have evolved and appeared and been forgotten and in any case let's start with uh, the easiest one the listings that we saw at the EEC they don't mean that the graphics card is coming anywhere in the near future it doesn't even mean that it exists now we do know that it exists because Lizisu confirmed it on the CES interview and that it would come this year but the listings themselves mean nothing the 5950XT number uh, name that means nothing I it's just a placeholder in case it launches. Companies do that all the time, so it really, that's nothing to go on about. In any case, we know it exists, and I personally think it would make more sense if it is called the RX 6000 something, because it's going to be featuring uh, RDNA 2, so it would make sense if it would be the 6000 series and not the 5000. Now, as far as the performance, again, no official things. There's leaks out there that the die is going to be twice as big as the 5700 XT, blah, blah, blah. That does not really mean a whole lot because we don't know exactly what that entails. Uh, even if the die is twice as big, that does not make it twice as powerful because it does not scale perfectly linearly like that. Uh, there's rumors it would be 30% faster than 2080 Ti. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I hope so, but we have no proof of that, nowhere to go on, and there's a detail that we also really have no actual knowledge about, which is ray tracing. RDNA 2 cards are supposed, or at least they have been heavily implied, to have uh, hardware level solutions for ray tracing, so if those hardware solutions are there, how much space will they actually take on the die, and how is that going to affect the performance of the traditional rasterization that is used in most games these days uh, instead of ray tracing? So it could take a chunk of that supposed twice as big die to have the ray tracing cores. I, they're not going to be called RT cores because it's an invidious thing, but those, well, that die space, let's call it then, uh, is going to be taken by whatever ray tracing acceleration hardware they have there, so we can pretty much uh, assume that the 100% die increase, supposed, might not really be all for traditional rasterization. There's also rumors floating about it's going to be using HBM2 memory and this and that. Also, again, no specific information, nothing really is known. And we, for actual specifics, we obviously will have to wait for an actual official announcement to see what pans out. However, I am hopeful and I'm pretty confident that they will beat or 
very close you beat the 2080 Ti. Will NVIDIA have an answer for that? I'll discuss that in just a second when I'm talking about NVIDIA's prospects for the future. In the meantime, I do hope it does come out soon. It would be pretty great for AMD to take the crown as well on the GPU department as well. And I don't say this because I want to see AMD on top of everything. I say this because NVIDIA has had no competition for a very long time. And as we are seeing now at the budget uh, segment with the 2060 price drops, for example, or on the CPU segment with the Intel slashing prices left, right and center, competition is essential for us as consumers to get a good deal. And we are just being extremely milked right now with graphics cards on the high end. So having competition there would be beneficial for everyone. Even if you're an NVIDIA fan, it would be great if AMD was on top because you'd get your cards cheaper. So uh, there's that. As far as NVIDIA goes, and I'm going to detail what I think about NVIDIA's products and when they're going to come out on that sort of stuff before I actually compare the two and tell you what I really think is going to be happening in the end. NVIDIA has been well sitting on its ampere generation it is in no rush to launch it however they are supposed to be launching this year towards the end of the year so yeah they're going to be on the seven nanometer process so that's going to be a very big improvement right there and as you guys know if you follow the sort of topics they've been under fire for the last couple of years because of the poor performance improvement from the previous generation to this current one and well, the pricing really did never really come down after the mining bubble. If anything, it even went up after that. So we are kind of still paying premium for features that are barely useful. Hate racing, they say hate racing is the future, and I do believe, believe that, but the hardware is not there quite yet. So we are basically paying uh, to be beta testers on this uh, basically early adoption hardware. This increase from, for example, the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti, uh, if my memory does not fail me, it was around the 30-ish percent. So that's nothing to write home about when the price also increased by almost double, if not, yeah, pretty much almost double. So yeah, that's really nothing to write home about. Now, the 1080 Ti was a bit of an outlier. It gave a bigger performance increase than most things before in generational leaps. So yeah, it was a bit of an outlier. However, then they should just not have charged as much for the 2080 Ti, but yeah, that's a bit besides the point here. In any case, the 30,000 C, well, that's still a few years away, the 30,000 series, but the 3000 series should be coming later in the year. And there have been leaks, obviously. There was one just this week that, uh, well, I'm not really going to focus on that, but they are supposed to have 50% increased performance, 50% increased power efficiency, be, I don't know how much better at high tracing, all of this at the same time, and at the same time also being cheaper at the high end. That's not going to happen. Not all of that is going to be true at the same time time that's just a massive hype train that they're trying to build with putting information like this out there so don't really put your eggs there i do believe that they might be cheaper mostly because of amd creeping up at the high end like they seem to be that part i do believe however the actual numbers of how much better it's going to be that uh, remains to be seen i think the performance increase they mentioned might be on the hay tracing department I do get it that they are moving to seven nanometers and that's going to give them a lot more efficiency and all that sort of stuff but it's that that's a very big leap that those numbers are giving us to actually be true from such a move before the 3000 series though there is the matter of the 2080 ti super that has been rumored for so long i think that it probably does exist but there is no reason for them to launch it right now the AMD is not really competing with the 1080 Ti, not by a very long shot. Their 3000 generation is going to be coming later this year, so st stacking the product uh, line even higher at this point would really not, almost not be worth the investment of getting the board partners to uh, develop the models, put them out there, head of them, all that sort of um, red tape that goes into that probably not really worth it unless they really have to. Now, if AMD were to release the 59, uh, well, let's call it the 5950 XT just for convenience sake, if they're going to release that anytime soon, let's say in the next two, three months, 
Nvidia probably would put out the 2080 Ti Super. I'm sure they have it ready to ship. They would probably put it out pretty quickly just to retain the crown for those six months and keep people focused on Nvidia being the best. So yeah, otherwise I don't think they will release it at all if they don't have to. I mean, what's the audience for that really? Uh, most of the people that buy cards at that range know that Unpad is coming this year, most likely, almost certainly, let's say. They're not going to shell out however much they're going to charge for that, which will probably be at least the same or more than the current 2080 Ti prices for a card that's going to be outdated in six to seven to eight months. So that's it would not sell a whole lot. I mean, people with a lot of money to burn might, most people definitely will not. For starters, and this might be an unpopular opinion with a lot of people because the hype train is very high for AMD right now, but I do think Nvidia will keep the crown at least for this generation. And after that, I mean, who knows, tech moves very fast. So uh, who knows what the, the future will bring in the generation after, but on this current generation that will be launching 2020 slash 21. I do think the video will retain the crown for performance for, well, a few reasons that I'll just, uh, well, it's mostly because look at AMD, how they are right now with their uh, highest end card, the 5700 XT. They are competing at the 2070 Super range. To compete with the 2080 Ti, they would have to, well, the big Navi will compete with that, but it's already a very big of a leap that they have to do in one go, and I don't doubt that they can do it. However, you have to consider that NVIDIA is getting the 2080 Ti's results that it has on its current, um, is it 12 or 14 nanometers, something like that, node, and they are also going to be moving to 7. That's going to give them a whole lot of breathing room in terms of power efficiency and just overall, overall performance on that node. That's a whole lot of breathing room that they get to have a much better performance jump if they so choose to give that to us. I do not doubt that they technically can. The question is, um, do they think they have to in order to stay on top and to still be impressive and have people upgrade. So I do think that we will see quite a performance jump this generation, whether that will be rasterization or uh, more focus on the hate tracing side remains to be seen. I personally hope that um, hate tracing does get uh, quite a performance increase, uh, something like a stable 100 FPS at 1440p or something would be something I would really look forward to in AAA games. I don't think uh, they will get to like the 144Hz, 1440p, for example. They might get to the stable um, 60 at 4K, things like that. In any case, I just hope that they don't leave the rasterization part behind because, well, high resolutions are getting more and more popular. Uh, refresh rates are becoming more and more important for a lot of people. Look at the consoles, for example, they're all advertising uh, higher refresh rates uh, and stuff like that. So definitely something that I would like to see a bit more improved than the last uh, generational leap to push those frame rates up, push those resolutions up. TVs are getting bigger, screens are getting bigger, high resolutions are getting more popular. So it definitely is important. And well, we all know that uh, mostly in game development, the optimization is kind of lazy, so if the graphics cards aren't up to par, you just won't be able to get great results uh, with, uh, well, bit worse graphics cards because they'll just optimize the bare minimum and uh, just hope your hardware does the rest. And that's my take on the matter. I think, honestly, in the end, the video will hold the crown might change next generation. We know how it went with Ryzen. The first uh, generation Ryzen was good, like Navi 1 was good. It was a good architecture, good GPUs, great price performance at the budget, much like the Ryzen generation was great price performance at the CPU budget levels that they were when they came out. Second generation Ryzen started almost reaching parity on some points. However, it was also still about the price uh, performance ratio. 
although with more performance there and almost reaching parity or even surpassing Intel on the mid-range. And that's what I think RDNA 2 is going to be. It's going to be uh, competing strongly at every level and falling perhaps just a little bit short at the top end. I think they will be just a bit like this close to being um, as fast as the 3080 Ti. I think they'll be my, like 10% behind or something. This I'm just throwing numbers. I have no data. I have no inside sources or anything. This is what I'm thinking will happen based on how it happened with the CPUs and based where each company stands today. So that is what I think. And then the generation after that, then we'll have to see. We'll have to see how NVIDIA will adapt to 7 nanometers. We'll have to see what tricks they have up their sleeve, how far they are in development and what their architecture brings. There have been talks about multi-die GPUs, stuff like that. We'll have to see if that actually comes to pass or not. And same thing goes for AMD. We'll see how RDNA 3, which I'm guessing is how it's going to be called, how efficient and how good it is. We'll, we'll obviously still have to see how RDNA 2 is. But in any case, um, yeah, I do think that they need one more generation to achieve true parity with NVIDIA and the high-end GPU market. And after that, who knows? It's still a long time from that. In the meantime, I think they will launch the 50, uh, 5950 XT before NVIDIA launches any Ampere cards. I think they might take the crown for a while. And well, there's the possibility NVIDIA will launch the, T the TI Super for the 2080. I somewhat doubt it. Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. The um, sooner NVIDIA, uh, AMD launches their card, the longer they can profit from being the top dog, let's say, before NVIDIA takes the crown again. The more money they get, the more mindshare they get, all that sort of good stuff. However, the earlier they launch it, the more likely NVIDIA will be to launch the 2080 Ti Super that they probably have um, in their hands to throw out there. And, well, the later it is, then the closer it is to the Ampere launch and the less profitable it is for NVIDIA to do that other than the bragging rights kind of thing. So yeah, it's a bit of a choice. Am I longer on top or do I have more chances to actually stay on top for a while? So yeah, they have that kind of mind games to play with, which um, they seem to enjoy doing that. Let me know what you guys think of the GPU market in 2020. I am personally very excited for the competition. Like I said, everyone benefits, especially us, mostly us, definitely. Uh, the prices probably go down, the performance leaps per generation will probably go up, and I am personally itching for an upgrade. So I do hope Ampere comes out soon. And if AMD is better than that, then I do hope AMD will come out soon. Let's see which of those companies prove me wrong. Leave a like and a comment on this video telling me your opinion and if you like this sort of uh, commentary. I know it's not a lot uh, of facts. I don't give you guys a lot of charts. It's a lot of talking head kind of thing. You have to stare at this for a long while, which is a bit of a disadvantage, I guess. But in any case, um, I would like love for you guys to tell me what you think of this type of videos if you enjoy them uh, what do you think should get changed and uh, how to improve on them and also obviously on the content on the commentary like i said i have no inside sources no really not really part of a lot of uh, those insider circles like a lot of other bigger youtubers might be so yeah i can have to wing it with mostly opinion pieces i suppose in any case, um, if you'd like to help our channel grow in the future and actually have access to things like this to be able to talk about them better and try them out better, consider subscribing. It would really be appreciated. And that's really what we need to grow right now. That is the main thing, the most important thing. And well, feel free to check our other content because there might be something else that you like. This has been Attic PC Guy. I'll see you guys in the next time. And well, let's keep our hopes up for the GPU market.